<laughs> well, let's talk about the book, um, which I found um, the only reason why I chose this book was it was readily available on Hoopla. People could get it and listen to it. And I really hadn't read too much on it. And um, then when I started to read it, uh, I kind of didn't like the language because it, it, the dialect that she was using uh, was really, I, I stopped listening to it and started to read it <coughs> on, a, on a computer, which I'm not crazy about. And um, so I got done with it. I, I, I it felt like some of the stuff was like, gosh, this can't possibly happen. But then after reading all of this, the blue people and all that is so true. And did anyone know any of this stuff? No. I, I had never. Could you, just, no. could you please synopsize the book? Yeah. I okay. So it's um, the story of the uh, a pack um, a pack horse librarian. So during WPA, they set up a, a system of librarians who would take mules and whatever horses uh, through the hills of um, uh, Kentucky and um, bring books for like used books from um, other people and they would drop off these books. And um, so there was quite a few of them and um, so this person happened to be um, a Fugit, or a Car she's Carter, but uh, there's a, in Troublesome Creek, uh, Kentucky, um, there is a group of people that have a blood disorder that causes their blood to be like a brown color, which makes their skin blue. So uh, they were treated as if they were, um, they were considered, they were called colors. Um, they were uh, mistreated. They were, um, weren't, they just what the blacks, how the blacks were being treated in the South, they were treated the same way. They couldn't use the bathroom. Uh, so it was the story of um, this woman and her, how she was treated. Plus she was this librarian that did everything for her community. Um, it didn't matter how what people thought about her and so it was a story about really about poverty and um, what these people <coughs> coal mining area went through so if you if you know anything about this author she hasn't really written a lot she's written three books and um, they all take place in Kentucky where she's from uh, she was an orphan up till the age of 11 and then she went into foster home until 14, and then she was homeless. So she really knows poverty. I mean, if you listen to this woman, I'm like, whoa. Um, so she really speaks from the heart. Um, she knows what it is. And she went and um, lived the life of the pack uh, horse librarian. Um, and, and so when she reached, she did a lot of research for this book. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's her story. And it's just like one bad thing after another happened to this woman. Um, <laughs> but in the end, she found love. She got yeah. love in the end. Yeah. yeah. Love was so difficult because she was considered, you know, they called her colored. So she couldn't marry. Um, well, she married him anyways. And then he was thrown in jail because he married someone that, and that was still happening. It's almost, it's almost worse. It's really worse than black. You yeah. know, the, the black, you know, it's like they were afraid of them. Like they, yeah. you know, like they had some great disease that was going to. And we lived in Kentucky for a couple of years. And I swear, I remember people talking about the Kentucky blues. Didn't know what they were talking about, but maybe this was it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess they're, they're still around um, from the research. Well, if you listen to her um, talking about it, there's a PBS. I, you know, after we talk, you might want to listen to this. But um, there's a PBS um, discussion, and she um, says that there are they're still around, and um, one of them reached out to her, and um, so yeah, it, it they're just not as many. It, it 
you need to have two people with the gene um, marry in, in order to have children that have this condition. So, um, yeah, it's, it, so that, that whole thing was in the story too. So did everyone like it? Did you like the book? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. I, like it. I loved it. I'm not yeah. quite finished, but I do love it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I'm, and, and then after, I, I sometimes like a book better after I've read it and, and think back about it. And again, it was a mm -hmm. struggle to read for a while and I was trying to read. So it took me literally, I can read in a couple of days a book, but this took me yeah. the whole time. Maybe um, it was the coronavirus then. It was the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was a really slow reading for me. And I think, um, you know, I was having a hard time concentrating. And But um, so I read it very slow. And um, yeah, but, um, and then reading about all of uh, what was happening and, um, so yeah, it's it's an inter it was an interesting time the '30s and the pack horse librarians. I never knew about them. I guess there are some children's books about it. So um, anyone else have any feelings you want to share before we talk about controversy? <laughs> I'm gonna wait till controversy because I've read the other book and I thought that that's what you were talking about. I was like, wait, yeah. I? no, yeah, I read the, I read both books. So. What book? What other book? What, <laughs> what are we talking? Um, there's two books about uh, the um, the librarians. Um, and the other book, what's I don't even know that I forgot the title. Um, the Star, Giver of Stars. Giver of Stars. Giver of Stars. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. Um, yeah. Both of them have similarities, and both of them are different. But both of them, I think, really. Um, talk about how wonderful these PAC women were and how they brought so much to their community and how important it was for um, the literacy program and um, you know when the controversy of having two books of the same topic well there are many books of the same topic I mean World War II has millions of books so I don't know what the big controversy is. Well, you, the controversy is there was no books and then two books. And um, there were children's books, but in, and what happened was an article came out in the Smithsonian and, and whenever it came out and um, in 2017, the Smithsonian article, and that's when Jojo Moyes read about it from Smithsonian. Now, um, the other author, is it Kim? I forget her. Yeah. Friend. She um, lived in Kentucky and she knew about all of this because of living in Kentucky and um, the other authors from the UK. And so um, they both claim, uh, well, um, Kim, the author of the um, uh, Troublesome Creek, um, someone, one of our editors said, oh my gosh, this book is so similar. And if you look at the BuzzFeed article, it goes through um, all the similarities in the book. Like, um, it was really interesting. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few um, uh, here. copyright issues. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but uh, Kim, the author of Troublesome Creek, they said, you know, you have a case, but you'll have to pay for your own lawyer. And uh -huh. she said, I, I don't have that kind of money. And she said, I'm just going to have to leave it as, and she put, you know, books that there are two books about the pack horse librarians that came out at the same time. And, and I guess it, it's bringing, it's a good thing. <laughs> So she, in the end, she says it was a good thing, but I, I feel bad for her because um, I do too. She, she, it was her idea oh. and, you know, does that happen? I mean, you, uh, Jojo Moy said she put it on Facebook that she was writing this topic. So there's a lot of like, um, any other, you know, World War II, you can say, yeah, there's lots of those books, even World War I, but civil war but not pack horse librarian books 
all coming out at the same time. It's so. the same number of characters. There are similarities with when the wedding happens and how old the child yeah. is. It's what the gifts they have. It's actual verbatim conversations had while yeah. on the path horse when she was being chased by the preacher guys. So we yeah. had really very mm -hmm. weird similarities. Yeah. So who yeah. came Well, first? they both get killed. Kim's came first. Jojo Moyes came second. Oh, interesting. Jojo Moyes, Kim was researching and starting as early as 2015. Oh, Jojo oh. Moyes started in 2017 and wrote it in nine months. Wow. And, and Jojo Moyes, Jojo Moyes refused to be um, interviewed. Correct. She has never made a statement. Sketchy. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. They, they both have the seems, same. This all seems like publisher greed to me. Well, and the pu okay. and it's the publishers. Um, they seem they had one in common, so the publishers didn't want to pursue it because, you know, it would hurt everybody in the end. Um, well, so. I have a question about the children's books. In the children's books, do they talk about the distribution of books? Obviously, do they talk about? The blue people in the children's books? No, I don't think the blue. She's the only one that touched on the blue people, and um, the no, not in the children's books. And I, I mean, she put together the blue people because she was interested in that, and the Pat Horse librarians. They really, um, there isn't any record of a blue person being a Pat Horse librarian. Uh, well, I was under the impression that she brought the, again, I haven't read it, and if my questions are bothersome, tell me, but no. under the impression that she delivered, the librarian delivered to the blue people? No, the librarian was the blue person. She was okay. called Blue. Thank you. Thank and, you. And she was, there were certain criteria to be one of these pack women. You couldn't be married. You and um, it was interesting because they had also had a black woman being a PAC librarian. So it was because Eleanor Roosevelt was the instigator or preface this. She let people of different uh, ethnicities become these PAC librarians. Am I right on that? Yeah, and there was in. Uh, there were men, but not that many. It was mostly women that did it. And one curious thing that I've, that I, again, having not read it, but one thing that runs through my mind is this is absolutely dazzling. This is the 30s. My, my limited my vision of Kentucky is that not many people read them. Yeah. So and the fact mm -hmm. that this was even done there, I think, is absolutely amazing. Oh. I know this is historical fiction. I know um, in the book there's a black woman and then the blue woman, but in real life there is only white people who were pack librarians. Okay. Thank you, Morgan. So that's just a fiction. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think in I have not read the other book, but there was a black pack horse librarian in um, the other book too. Yeah, well, she was she was an admin person, which was okay. really like she was she would organize the the library. She yeah, wasn't she actually out packing. Door, she had to come in the back door and leave. People couldn't see her in the library. She came at odd hours in the other one, the, the, right. the black person. And of course, people were upset when they found out because the library system, anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read that one now that, um, you know, now that could I know. Could you review the two titles? One is Something Troublesome Creek, and that's about... That's the fictional account that contains the librarian was the blue woman. Yeah. They, both, yeah. they both are fictional accounts. They both have blue women. They both have black, a black woman also. And the second title, Morgan, is? Giver of the Stars. Thank you very much. Yeah. And um, which, I don't know, um, those of you who've read both, do you, do you favor one over the other? Um, I, think, I think I like Troublesome Creek better. I thought it was more realistic than The Giver of Stars, but both of them were informative in ways. But both of them, 
as I said, I think this one was more accurate in its portrayal. And The Giver of Stars is going to be made into a film. Wow. So, um, so she will then, you know, wreak mm. all the benefits of it being a film. And, right. and I just feel bad for this other woman who really is, I mean, she's a struggling author. And um, um, yeah. Well, she researched this for five years and lived in Kentucky. So she has a much more real life experiences with the whole thing. She lived in Kentucky. She has that Kentucky accent. You can, when you listen to the uh, interview, you, you can tell. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. So, so is the language and Giver of the Stars authentic? Did, did she, yeah. did, did Moise the whole Kentucky Was it authentic, the language? Yeah, and did give they use the, 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 the hill language? Um, I don't actually remember any, like, are you talking, like, like, slang, or? Yeah. Well, local colloquialisms, I would colloquialisms. say. Colloquialisms. Uh, yeah. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't really find any of that. I mean, I think that, because I actually didn't read Troublesome Creek, but I do just hearing you guys talk about it, the similarities of how they, you know, we're servicing mainly poor people and unfortunately like the the well-off people didn't like that so but the Jojo boys you know like paint was one of the words I remember Did I don't remember those terms those, you know the colloquial no I didn't I don't remember I don't remember if she did it doesn't it's not standing out to me I, I agree. I think the um, the Troublesome Creek had more authentic language than Giver of the Stars. Giver of the Stars was more, you know, in the general population. Right, right. Yeah. And I guess the character was um, English in Giver of the Stars. Yep. That's right. That's, right. That's part okay. of it, too. That changed it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's interesting about the book um, is like some of the things like the scrapbook. Um, they didn't have enough books, so they made scrapbooks of um, recipes. And I thought that was so super cool. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd we'll love to see what one of those scrapbooks looks like. Um, I wonder if the bookmobile, you know, has any, like, I know that they have all the, like, books that are intact, but it, I can check with the Historical Society to see if they have any, oh, I see one permanent. any of those types of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A I record never, of it. Yeah, I never heard of such, you know, I thought that was pretty cool that they uh, would do that, and um, yeah, so that was cool. Also, I know she threw in a lot of um, hill things that happened just to that area of the country, like different foods and the, um, the courting candle. And um, so just different mm -hmm. things that you would have seen um, uh, just in that area of the country um, she had in the story. Well, it's not only in that area of the country, though, too. My, I'm from Nebraska originally, and we had a courting candle. I oh! Didn't, I didn't use it when, but we had that in some of our family stuff. Okay. I've never heard of, I had never heard of that. Oh. I, I asked my mom to come on because she could show what it looks like. It basically was like wrought iron that was twisted around, and then you could, you could spin the candle up, to how much you want to burn before it would put itself out. And so that's why when she talked about, like she made it go all the way down. So like only this much is gonna burn. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> Interesting. Uh. Mm. Yeah. Fun. So I guess they would put it on the porch and then people would come up while the can and see that like you would be advertising that you would be having a courting coming up and it would show how tall the candle is. And then people could come up and talk for as long as the candle was burning. And then that was your time to like, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the character of Miss Loretta. I did too. 
and, and I think um, when she um, compared uh, color of um, race color to the fabric of a quilt was such a, a moving um, uh, quote from the book. It was, it, it made everything make sense for um, Cussie. So uh, does anyone remember that quote where she- Oh, no, I remember it from the, um, from the interview, but yeah, I remembered it from the book also yeah. because it was talking about all the different types of fabrics and how, you know, they're all beautiful and it was very moving. It really was. That was some are rough, some are smooth, some are pretty, some are ugly, but we're all cloth and we're all, you know, and it was just very moving. Uh, yeah. I, she was a good character to, for Cussie Mary because there were so many mean people to her in the house. Oh, yeah. I just, I didn't the other, say hi to my mom because she just came on. Hi, mom. Corbin's <laughs> <laughs> mom. Um, I think the mule also, when she said, was basically a character in the book too because she, the mule had a big part in, in her life and had a very interesting character too. I mean, she had a real good personality. It was I very interesting. Mule. I love yeah. <laughs> the mule was, was so cool. And I had no idea that there was a female apostle. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either. She, she was the character that could have honest feelings and act out as opposed to everyone else is so sheltered in expressing their emotion, actual feelings and actual thoughts in their head. They were very contained and mm -hmm. structured within their social classes where the mule was not that. I know. <laughs> it could just be herself and just bite those men all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it was interesting. I did not know that when the author said a, a mule can kick in all directions. I didn't know that. So it was that was an interesting fact that unlike a horse or some other types of um, animals, they can kick anyway. Sai, remember that from the interview? Yes, Jay? yes, yes, yes. Ways and yeah. forward. I didn't know that. And and, and she was saying uh, how mules have a different personality because there wasn't really any data about or any research she found about mules with the pack horse librarians. They had um, donkeys and they had horses, but not mules. And and then she went on to talk about why she chose the mule um, and all of those things. It was more of it had a personality in it, and it and it it wanted to survive. It it knows something about survival. Did you remember that, Marsha? A mule has. I just knew it was big and strong, and she wanted that kind of personality for this this yeah. character, this horse. Horses are. Um, she was just the way she had it. And she said, because of the kicking and all those things, she could, it was, a, she wanted that kind of character, that strength and that individual for this particular animal, as I recall. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Didn't she I'm end up with the mule? I'm absolutely fascinated by all of this. Because again, I haven't read the book, but I've been using other device to check historical fact. And this is incredible to me because it's a project that went on from not, until 1943. Yeah. Yeah. 43. And um, you're talking about the mules. I was just reading that a woman, her mule dies and she hikes 18 miles. I mean, without her mule, she was strong. And the fact that yeah. accepted by the hill people in Kentucky is amazing. And just one more historical fact, and then I, I can't wait to listen again. Um, there's 754 bookmobiles in Kentucky today. It's wow. the largest in the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Continuation of this project. I think the next, the other interesting thing was they paid these people $28 a month, but they had to find their own books, which, 
I, they weren't given these books. They had to get them from other resources, libraries or that were giving them away. So they had really, really uh, thrown away or secondhand kind of material. I didn't was, really I would think if you were paying somebody to do this, then you would provide them with books and materials, but they didn't. It goes back to historically from what I just read, it goes back to what a comment just made earlier that wealthy people didn't want poor people to have these books. And so they, they, it says in the history of it, it says that it, they were accepted by donation and they accepted any and all materials and particularly one that was helpful to them were Bibles, that that was one way that they could, if they read the Bible as they were going in to help people that didn't want outsiders, they were more accepted. But it, this also talks about how they repaired books, books wore out, but they were donated. And it, it's a great point that you pay somebody to do it, but don't give them the tools they need. Yeah, and there was something, so in Giver of Stars, like there was a big mining operation that was essentially gonna come in and decimate the hill people's area. And the, the richer people didn't want the hill people to know how to read. But then right. once the librarian started servicing them, they started to learn how to read. And then they were able to, you know, get these letters about the mine and know what's going on in their community. So it was just like, you know, they're trying to suppress the, that class. So they did, there wasn't a lot of support for it. They also, um, a lot of the Hill people were, um, they were a little iffy about anything WPA. Like, yeah. It was like, uh, you know, giving it, they're trying, like the government's trying to push itself on us and, and they don't, they didn't want that, which was interesting to me um, that that some of the, that's how some of them treated them like, you know, it's a WPA. I don't want to have anything to do with the WPA, even though it was free books, but um, yeah, so. But I think there's, a fear, I think there's a fear of having literacy, also from the standpoint of it takes, there was that one character who said it took away from everyone doing their chores. Oh, and yeah. 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 Doing, cool. doing your work time instead of being leisurely and not getting my food on the table and such. Yeah. yeah. And he had the Boy Scout book, so he learned how to hunt. So then it was okay. <laughs> to hunt. Like knowledge had to prove itself. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then he had a recipe, but I think that's another reason why they made those books for people because they didn't have books. So they would gather recipes or articles and that would interest these people more. And um, of course the Bibles too, but um, because that was accepted as reading material where some of this other stuff wasn't. And given of the stars, there was that controversial material. Um, there was material in Giver of the Stars that t told women um, how to prevent pregnancies. And that was the, oh, remember yeah. that just, and that was the big controversy in that one. Well, it was also about, I mean, enjoying sex, which was right. totally not okay for women in those days. Yeah, so that was, that was a big difference in these two books was this literature that was supposedly illegal that this one pack horse woman, if discreet, but then it was found out and that was big deal. So, um, because for big, we should know about our own bodies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there's so many, there's so many levels that this book that, that you're revealing that this book talks about. And one thing, Janine, that you made the point about, um, non-acceptance of the WPA. I Last year, I went to Warm Springs, Georgia to um, um, FDR's home there. And I've always been struck by how an aristocratic, and he was an aristocratic rich man, politician, could be so accepted universally, particularly by people not of his class, so to speak. And I think what, what I learned at Warm Springs, Georgia was rural electrification. It cost more to electrify Warm Springs, the house at Warm Springs, which was about the third of a, the size of the house on the Hudson River. And he 
rural electrification, I think, broke down a lot of barriers because at up until FDR doing that, only rich people could afford it because of the local hardware store had the contract and they could sell the electricity for anything they wanted. But once the WPA took it over and gave it to everybody, it was cheaper. And I think the books are another example, as Jess, as Jess pointed out. Once the people could read, they knew what, they knew what m the mind was trying to do to them. So the spreading of things equally is what helps, I think. And I think rural electrification, I cannot stress the epiphany I had standing there reading mm -hmm. in Warm Springs, Georgia. Well, I mean, it's like today's broadband internet, you know, it's kind of the same. It's, I feel like there's a lot of similarities there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or even what they do for solar panels, they make everybody jump through hoops. The utilities right. don't want people right. to be empowered to provide their own electricity. Yeah. Mm. I think this whole discussion illustrates that knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And For sure. The, For sure. I'm yeah. fascinated by I'm fascinated by this book and I thank you all for teaching me about it. I, I really do. And it, well I I didn't do my homework yeah. either, so I <laughs> I've been taking notes. I yeah. um I belong to another book club and they switched the book last week. So I've been, you know, focusing on that. I had to put this aside. <laughs> so I'll catch up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm I'm so glad I read it now. Um yeah. And, yeah. and I am gonna read The Giver of Stars with a whole different almost like, ooh. You know, like as a detective, I think it's good that I now know I've read this article about the comparison of the two books because it'll make me read it differently. I'm, I'm sure of it. So I had seen the article last year come out and before and I hadn't read I this is the only book I've read, but I also I was reading detective wise already even with this. Yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. Just mm -hmm. unbelievable, you know, because I'm sure that happens a lot in the a publishing business. Um, yeah, I know even J.K. Rowling had some trouble too mm -hmm. with um, people saying that's my idea. Um, yeah, but this is, yeah, and I could see, yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I think he's guilty. Yeah, yeah, something, or you just re read something on, you know, you're, you're constantly strolling through Facebook, you're looking at other and you get, oh, I should write about that. And little did you know, you just read someone else's post about it. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it'll be good. I'm going to read both book. I mean, the second, I, uh, and, and compare uh, as I read it, but that one's hard to get <laughs> um, digitally yet because it's still too new. So, um, that mojo digital i have no idea how i so easily got connected but i think it's due to your efforts and definitely due to morgan's so thank you both very much for what you've done for us this is amazing i've had other mm -hmm. people talk about zoom discussions and they said that they're very confusing because everybody talks at once and i think we've had a really i'm not saying it should end i just think that we've had a very good discussion and been respectful of each other. Thank sure. you. I, sure. I, I think just that's dazzled dazzled all of you. Because <laughs> I have all your microphones on who are allowing their microphones on. So it speaks to everyone's um, common courtesy. So thank you all. Yeah. So let's just talk about our next book since um, it's getting towards, you know, time. Uh, our next book is Yellow House by Sarah Brown. And um, I, I chose that book because it's easily available. Um, it's on our list. It was a um, national, it's won lots of awards. It's about Katrina. It's a, um, a memoir uh, about Katrina. So it's kind of good that we're reading about another uh, uh, period of time. I'm sure we're gonna have lots of coronavirus books out in a few years. <laughs> But um, Yellow House by Sarah Brown is our next book, and it's available very easily on Hoopla. Uh, not the audio, just an ebook format. 
Um, the Lager Queen of Minnesota, I moved to July because um, the Lager Queen is not easily available. Uh, you have to pretty much read the print and the ebook is a long wait. So uh, kind of- Could I ask a question about Hoopla? Have you is, does anyone um, have trouble? Wait, Janine, have you given us a list? Have you given us a list? Like yeah. Last year of all the different months. Yeah, I did, and I'll resend it because now it's it, it's got a couple of changes because of the quarantine okay. and okay. Um, yeah, because we we can't meet um, next month either. Uh, we'll be meeting virtually for Yellow House. So I needed a book that people can, it's on Hoopla. And if you're having trouble with Hoopla, sometimes some people do have troubles. Have, has it come back for you, Nancy? Yes. Oh. My it trouble has, is- and then it froze up again. Okay. Yeah. It, have you been able to download the book for Yellow yes. House? Were you able to? Okay. And Joan, are, um, who else was having trouble Karen, with it? Karen was having I, trouble. I, I did have trouble with, uh, it'll lock up. I'm not sure if it's my iPad. It like, it won't turn the page every once in a while. Yeah, I have that trouble too. Okay. And, and then, then I just know that eventually it'll happen. <laughs> okay. you download the full file. Do you download it first and then page through it? Or are you doing it not downloaded? Well, maybe it's not downloaded. I'm not sure. Now that I, now that you say that, you know, I just go on Hoopla and rent the book and start reading it. I'm not, you know, maybe it isn't downloaded. If you're using the app, usually it'll make you download it. So um, I use it for audiobook mostly. I haven't tried it too much with the ebook, but with audiobook, you can actually do it and not download it. And maybe there's some lag time that happened. Um, you can actually tap download and then it will be all on your device. So you won't have lag time. Okay. So something to try. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's good to see everyone. Uh, any other last thoughts before we. Um, Call it a day. Everyone does thumbs up or thumbs down for, did you like this book? Yes. Oh, I, it, yes. <laughs> I liked it. Okay. <laughs> really did. I, I think it's really interesting when you learn something that you had no knowledge of before. And mm -hmm. it's such, mm -hmm. it's so interesting, especially with, and there's so many women that have done amazing things that we don't know about because of course, you know, it's like the hidden hidden figures. I mean, any of these things, they're just yeah. so interesting how wonderful these women were and what a service they did. I love the way she treasured her mother too, how she really, oh, yeah. that was just very heartwarming. Uh, mm -hmm. And her dad seemed to be a wonderful gentleman. Uh, yeah, except for he married her off to that icky bag. Yeah, I was really angry about that. Yeah. Like, that's oh. I, wonder, I wonder how many options you have of good, uh, you know, guys. So I think he was concerned for her. I mean, even being a single woman and having a job that only pays you twenty eight dollars, you know. Yeah. He was concerned. I think he was the, to go. Yeah, I think it was being kind to her to try to figure out. He needed to marry her off. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a promise. Sad, but true. And, and I feel like she she acted or she wanted to be independent, but you noticed that when he was gone for that time period and going to all the meetings, she was afraid by herself. So I mean, as much yeah. as you want to be independent in that kind of area, it's still you need some yeah. security. Well, she was afraid because of that reverend, I mean, and worried about him coming and you know so but it could have been anybody yeah you're in the middle of nowhere who knows yeah yeah before we end i just want to say again hooray janine that you're okay yeah hooray janine that you did this for us morgan thank you so much for doing this for us and everyone it's been really wonderful to see all of you i'm glad to know that you're doing well and 
I think we should really be proud of ourselves that we're doing this, but I think we should really be proud that our library is like the PAC women of Kentucky. I really think we are. I really think we are. And Tina, I know you're there and you get credit too. So thank you very much, everybody. And I hope everybody goes away from this with as much positivity and enthusiasm as I have. Thank you so much. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. Good, good to see you. Thanks, Morgan, for all your help. Thank and, you, Morgan. And I'll see everyone in uh, in two weeks. For and you know, if you have, yeah. If so you have, what is what is the so it'll be um, the twenty third? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, I have it downloaded, ready to go. <laughs> and there's yeah. a bunch of articles. Uh, Janine's posted uh, quite a few good ones where it's interviews with the author and both uh, audio and in video form. And I have posted all of the questions too from the discussion. So you can see there's a few people who've been commenting. So you can jump on there and give your two cents on some of the questions too. Great, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.